Welcome to the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast, where our goal is to help you increase your reputation as a leader, increase your ability to influence others, and increase your ability to fully engage your team to deliver remarkable results. Hi, I'm Perry Holly, a Maxwell Leadership Facilitator and Coach. And I'm Chris Cody, Executive Vice President with Maxwell Leadership. Welcome and thank you for joining. Today, we're going to talk about what if my team is not following my change lead? Mm. Um, this has never happened to me. Has it happened to you, Perry? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is totally a fiction thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> as, as we talk about coaching and, and, and training and working with clients, and, and as we lead ourselves, there's no doubt that this happens. So I'm looking forward to diving into that title with you today. Before we get started, I want to encourage you to go to maxwellleadership.com slash podcast. There, if you'll click on this episode, there's a form. And if you're interested in some coaching or training virtual or in person, we were just talking before we started a little bit ago, Perry's coming off the road, getting back on the road and going to serve some clients of ours. And so we would love to serve you and your team as well. Well, the first place that my mind goes when we start talking about this is people not following your lead, regardless of whether it's changed or not, right? It goes into what is your influence level with your team? And uh, John often says, you know, hey, the first place you probably want to look if that's not happen and happening is in the mirror. Yeah. And um, so talk a little bit about where this is coming from. I know we're building off of a, a series on change, but it's relevant to some of the things that, that you're dealing in and hearing in, in the corporate environment. Yeah, this comes up. Uh, I think I'm doing right, right, but people aren't following the lead. I don't know if they don't understand, if they're not bought in, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I, I'm hearing John in my mind saying, if you uh, if you think you're leading and you look and there's nobody following, <laughs> then you're just out for a for walk. walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it does uh, play nicely into where you were going there without influence. And my my number one go-to on that is as well as yours is the five levels of influence and thinking, man, if people aren't following, then what is my problem? What is, and like you said in the mirror, it is me and it is the influence level I have with people. And can I affect that? So that's what I was thinking. If um, you're new to our podcast, um, Perry and I have built this thing off of the five levels of leadership and it's a model. It's a methodology that John created 20 plus years ago, started out as a, a chapter in a book called Developing the Leader Within You, and there was quite a bit of traction around it. So he wrote a book around it, and now we have our consulting, training, coaching business that's built around it as well. At the simplest form, it is a model of influence. And what we're talking about here is that at level one, people follow you because you have the title of, of leader, manager, boss, mm-hmm. whatever it might be, and they have to follow you. That may be what's happening here, right? You may be getting some resistance and then they're not following you because they have to. So they're kind of pushing back a little bit. Kind of a salute and stay mute. Yeah. You know? like, ah. yeah. They don't wake up excited about, about coming to work every day. But what we want you to understand is that you've got to progress as a leader to level two influence, which is how do I connect with them? How do I build relationships with them so that they want to follow us? And at the core of what we're talking about today, that's we want to get people that will give us discretionary effort that will want to be a part of what we're doing, whether it's everyday work or going through some tough change. Yeah, I think the uh, after you do the influence check, you, you definitely, that's my go-to is, are people following me because they want to or they follow me because they have to? That's a, a great indicator right there. And then I thought, you know, the second place where I go if you're having trouble getting followership to your change lead is, uh, how do people respond to change efforts? And mm. uh, I've heard this uh, taught by a guy named Jim Keenan, and then I also heard Mark Cole, uh, our CEO, do a uh, a bit of uh, talk on it, yeah, yeah, talk on that as well. But uh, there's three descriptors that come out around how people can respond to change, and I thought maybe I would just mm. uh, get your point of view on some of these. And uh, one that we talked about a couple of weeks ago about. Re- re- resistance, but it's a change resistor. Mm. And the, the, you might hear someone that's a resistor to change is I kind of just like things the way they are. Um, it takes, you know, it's going to take that person out of their comfort zone. It may uh, put them at odds with the progress that's going on around here. Um, it keeps them from participating in growth uh, at all. So this resistor kind of, like you said, they're putting their hands up, salute, stay mute, and not not participate, but I wonder how you see these resistors. Yeah, as Perry mentioned uh, two weeks ago, we dove into this, and so I'd encourage you if you didn't hear that uh, lesson to go back and and really deep dive into resistance because we we spent a lot of time on it. Today we're just hitting it from a high level. Um, for for me, it's about communicating the why. Mm. You're going to get resistance from people. We've talked about that. It's going to be different levels, and so we need to make sure that we can 
help them understand. And by doing that, you have to communicate the, the why to them and then the how that's going to affect them and, and have empathy with them, show understanding, but make sure that you're getting to a point to where you're moving them from being a change resistor right, to someone that's beginning to understand why the change is happening. Because if they don't, they're going to become irrelevant and we right. need to continue to move forward. Hey, podcast listeners, many of you listening right now would probably love the autonomy that comes with owning your own business or becoming a coach that helps other businesses succeed. Well, we have a phenomenal strategy where you are 100% in control of your own business, earning income on your own terms, and have access to the people, tools, and resources you need to build a thriving leadership development business. When you become a Maxwell Leadership Certified Team Member, you join a global community of entrepreneurs led by our expert team of mentors and faculty, including John C. Maxwell. You'll also get one of the top leadership certifications in the world next to your name, giving you the boost you need to get started. Visit us online at maxwellleadership.com forward slash join the team to find out more. The another one that was interesting, I, it was kind of de deceptive. It said uh, Keenan called it the change acceptor. I thought, what? Isn't that good? And, but he, <laughs> it qualifies, says they have a wait and see oh. what happens yeah. mentality. So what is wait and see how this, you know, they think that it's going to be a train wreck. They'll just sit back and, and watch. But uh, they acknowledge the change, but they don't initiate anything. So they're, they're kind of sitting back with their arms folded. Uh, they let others lead out in that, and they uh, they value safety uh, and comfort too much. So they don't, they're not really bought into the change, but they'll accept the fact that you have changed. And I'm thinking this could have a real negative effect on change efforts. Cause now you think, I think, I think people are following my lead, but they're, they're not initiating. They're not taking action. They're, they're falling back into comfortable ways. Uh, you seen this happen? Yeah. And I would encourage all leaders, not just through change, but in every day, when you feel this and you feel like they're just the acceptors, more than not, they are probably disengaged inside your organization. Perry has given the example mm -hmm. before about, you know, rowing the boat and 10 mm -hmm. people in the boat uh, and the five in the middle are just along for the ride. Right. What, what, what am I doing on a daily basis just to get by in order to get my paycheck? So that's in essence what they're probably doing in this thing too here. It's like, what do, what do I, what do I need to do just to get to Friday to get another paycheck? <laughs> like what, what is going to happen? And they're, they're holding back from fully committing, by the way, in everyday work, but also with the change. And so you need to, as a leader, be aware of that. They're asking questions like, you know, do I really believe in this change to your mm -hmm. point? Is this something that is worth pursuing? Do I understand the reason for change? Like, can I logically, which is a challenge for me all the time when we go through changes, can I logically make sense of the change? Um, or this one, which can be very detrimental to organizations as, and leaders, which is, oh, I've heard this before. We've said we're going to do this. We said we're going to do these kind of things. They're not really serious. Or are we serious? And they're just sitting on the sidelines with the oars on the lap. I'm just watching as the boat goes by. And I totally love that you added that. I hear this from people. So why, especially people I'm coaching, that said, oh, our, our organization is going through a big change, and I'm not, I just don't agree or I don't like. I said, well, what, what's holding you back? And they say, well, they've done this before. And they, and I, it's almost like in my mind, there's a start and stop uh, pattern of we start a change effort, something got hard or something unexpected occurred and we stopped and then we paused and then we come back and we say, okay, well, now we're going to do this. And this start and stop, it's almost like crying wolf a bit that people say, well, I'll just wait out this out because this is not going to work. It, it never works. We'll just buy our time. Buy yes, yes, we'll just yes, buy our time. Yeah. And I said, so when you think about I want to move the, the the final group that they talk about as a change creator, but I wonder in, in, if you know this, maybe we have some bad starts and stops. Maybe we have some bad history. Um, but can you move uh, a change acceptor where they're not initiating, sitting back, waiting to see, biding their time? Can you move them toward this change creator? I think you can, and I think it all comes back to your ability to communicate the change to them. And uh, we did a, a session last uh, episode where we had yeah. the communication skills of a successful uh, leader that's led through change. 
And so in there, we talked about clarity. We talked about consistency. We talked about understanding, you know, what's in it for me mm-hmm. uh, from their perspective. How are you helping on, uh, communicate that? And then how do you evangelize and paint a picture for the future of what that looks like while you're communicating? And we closed mm-hmm. it by saying, hey, there's more to that just communicating the change. And you need to be aware of that. And I think if you can really take time to think about that and seriously um, approach your communication about the change, you can move them, you know, from the middle of the boat to the front of the boat. Yeah, cool. Well, the third category that was mentioned was a change creator. And so we had the change resistor, the change acceptor, but now the change creator. <laughs> and these are our today's problem solvers. They are, uh, I remember several weeks ago, we talked about, um, can you coach your team to be change agents. Are they mm-hmm. looking for change? Yeah. So these are the problem solvers. Uh, they believe that there's progress in change. They uh, recognize there's no growth, no innovation without change. Uh, they pull the organization forward. Uh, so you're looking for people like this on your team. Uh, you'd love to have an entire team of people like this that, that are really pulling us uh, forward to the next level. Um, but what do you think? Um, can you get everybody on the team to adopt to this? I I think it'd be good to have most people on this, but not everyone. I heard this, this uh, analogy one time. They were like, listen, we were talking about um, today, you and I were talking about a training course that we do called discovering your authentic leadership style. And we've partnered with an organization called right path. And we do assessments and we take the results of the assessments. And that's what we base the course off of. Mm -hmm. And we were in a room one time where, um, the CEO had this high, high kind of risk tolerance in essence, right? For, and um, the problem with that was it's awesome that you have that type of creator, that type of risk. Their CFO also had a high risk tolerance, which is like, <laughs> you tell yeah. me where we're going, what we're doing, and I'll write the check, right? Like you want to have some checks and balances um, to that. And, and it may be part of your culture that you are heavy on that side. And you do need to have that, by the way. I would encourage you if you don't have enough of them creators, you mm-hmm. need to you need to you need to think about how do I get some change creators around you or on your team to be part of of your culture. Because when that happens, when you have innovation and creativity um, and you accept change in your culture, uh, more than not, you're giving people permission to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You're giving them the freedom to to create. Uh, you're giving them the opportunity to work a little bit harder. Um, and and get outside the box and do things a little bit differently there. Um, you're okay with them implementing change. The the productive change that has taken place in the years past, you're, you're um, awarding that, you're celebrating that, you're creating that culture. And so I think with all of that, then the organization moves the needle a little bit faster. So having change creators is really good. We want to move people to be that. I think there's a little bit of balance, though, to make sure that we have some people and I'm speaking because I'm on the logic side, right? I'm like, whoa, slow down a little bit. What about X, Y, and Z? But it is something that is definitely beneficial for the organization. Well, I think um, just knowing, like you, like you said, the engagement rowboat, do I know, mm. do I take assessment of who are my rowers, who are my watchers, who are my sinkers? When it comes to change and communicating change, I think you need to take a, take a uh, assessment of who are my uh, resistors, who are my acceptors, and who are my creators, and, and then lead appropriately yeah. in that. So I want you to wrap it up for us. Yeah. Well, as we begin thinking about this, as Perry said earlier on, this is an influence thing, right? We we want you to think about this in the in the terms of change because that's kind of the theme that we're talking about right now. But this is a leadership thing, and as we begin thinking about change, you want the people around you to be champions of the change with you. You you want them to be in that boat. You want them to be in the first three seats, rowing as you compete against other uh, organizations in in your ecosystem. If they're not following you then I think you got to look internally about your influence and about your leadership with them. So there's three things that that may be happening that you need to be aware of. Number one, you lack a strong connection with them. We talked about a level two influence. You haven't done the work to set the foundation to lead them appropriately. And then when change happens, it's probably showing up. It's probably magnified. Um, maybe you're, maybe I wrote this down thinking about, again, the rowing thing. Maybe you're pulling in the wrong direction. <clears throat> maybe the organization yeah, yeah. is going one way and here you are as a leader trying to create a change that's going in the wrong direction. So you need to check that as well. And then finally, 
Um, maybe you're going a little bit too fast. Mm. Yeah. I think about the movie, which um, I've mentioned to you before. You probably heard The Boys in the Boat, yeah, right? The book, yeah. I know there's a book out that's fantastic. The movie's out. Fantastic. There's a pace at which everybody needs to be moving as as they're charting the course, as they're making changes. Um, and so you need to make sure that we're all moving at the same pace, which it also includes the leader of the boat right. who's setting the pace and making sure that he's not going too fast. So just a couple of things to think about when I was thinking about the opposite side of this, of things that could happen if you're in a place to where your team's not following your lead as you go through change. Super. Thank you. Great insights. Uh, just a reminder, if you'd like to get the learner guide for this episode, learn more about our offerings or leave us a comment or a question, you can do all of that at maxwellleadership.com slash podcast. We love hearing from you. Very grateful you spend the time with us. And that's all today from the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast. Mm-hmm.